Zoom just announced the pricing on their F3, and it's got amazing features for a very reasonable price. As a recorder, I really like the sense that it's rugged, that it can take a beating, and it's small enough to go anywhere, providing great quality sound. Now, two inputs is frankly frustrating. I think recorders need a minimum of three. Interviews are too common in the field, and it's best to have both people on lavs and then a boom in place, so you really need three inputs a lot as a working professional. Nonetheless, the F3 looks like a great piece of gear. Now, as attractive as the F3 seems, it's probably not the problem solver you need, though, because there are a lot of misconceptions following 32-bit float that should be unpacked. This may be a little controversial. The first misconception is sound quality. Does 32-bit float sound better than 24-bit? Well, no. In audio, your bit rate defines the recorder's ability to capture volume, from the softest whisper to the loudest jet engine. It's not about tonal quality. It's fairly impossible to explain how 32-bit float works in just a couple of minutes, but the gist of it is, is that the float part means that the sampling is occurring over 24 bits that move along the loudness scale, so to speak. It doesn't record more information at each loudness, it just covers a wider dynamic range, or volume range. Every tone is sampled with the same amount of data in 32 and 24 bit, so the audio quality hasn't improved. Your sample rate, 44 kHz, 96, 124, is where you're gathering more or less tonal information. 24 bits already gathers more information than the human ear can hear. Now another misconception that follows 32-bit float is that you can simply fire up your recorder and not have to worry about volume or noise. As long as you turn it on, plug in your mics, and hit record, you'll have usable audio on your SD card and that is simply not true. Much of your noise is going to come from your environment first and then your mic itself. In the real world, 32-bit float doesn't help much with sounds that are recorded too quietly because it's more likely that the signal-to-noise problem is happening at the mic with your source being too far away. And 32 bits doesn't magically remove background for clean audio. Now, in extreme situations, say your mic is placed properly but the gain got bumped all the way down by accident, 32-bit can do a better job of pulling that audio signal out of silence, but it needs to be recorded really quietly under negative 35 dB for 32-bit to be significantly better. that captured not just waveforms, but the tonal quality you want. If you want good audio, clean audio, audio that captures not just waveforms, but the tonal quality you want, intimate, distant, empty, lush, then you have to take the time to choose your mic and place it right, regardless of how many bits you have. And if you have to take the time for those things, then spending a moment to check your levels isn't really time consuming or inconvenient or technically difficult. But 32-bit float means you never have to worry about clipping, you say. And that's not quite true either. You never have to worry about clipping at the recorder, but your mic does have a maximum sound pressure or loudness level too. Mics have a wide range of max levels, from roughly 100 dB to 150, with lavs and cheaper mics generally on the low end. Most of the time your mic will handle loud signs just fine, so 32-bit float is as useful as you think in eliminating clipping. It's just not the only tool you have to protect against clipping. Most recorders nowadays offer dual recording, both my crusty Tascam DR2D and my barely professional DR70D have this feature. I can record a safety track at 12 dB below my chosen level, for the human voice that covers most situations from laughter to heated conversation. And you may find that other equipment you own have safety features too. My Hollyland Lark 150 has the ability to record the left channel at 6 dB below the right channel, resulting in yet another safety track. This is especially handy if you want to record directly into your camera. The Rode Wireless Go has a safety channel too, with a whopping 20 dB of reduction. Both of these mics have a dynamic range of just 100, so safety is warranted. I think the Hollyland is a little too little and the Rode a little too much, but they both add some peace of mind. In the analog recorder days, we always tried to record at the highest level possible before peaking. Analog recorders are typically noisy and that helped. With analog, you also needed a strong signal to move the drivers with the proper nuance and to saturate tape for a fuller sound. When the industry shifted to digital, it carried these practices with them. But digital recorders don't have drivers or tape to saturate, and dedicated audio recorders today are really quiet. So even if you're recording ambience or very quiet sounds, you can probably set 
your levels lower than you think. Setting your input level to negative 12 dB has been the standard since, I don't know, the beginning of digital recording, but it's not really based on much. Analog recorders would aim for zero on the VU, but its equivalent in the digital meter is negative 18 dB. And there's really not any reason to not set your levels between negative 16 and 18 dB. The first is normal for consumer grade recorders and the latter matches the calibration of professional gear. They're both close enough together to be interchangeable in the field. And they allow for audio levels to triple before clipping, even when you aren't using a safety track. Well, you should test it out to see if you can hear the quality difference between negative 12 and negative 18. So let's recap. 32-bit float doesn't sound better. Most of the time, it doesn't protect against audio that's recorded too low. And while it does a perfect job of protecting against clipping, well, you've got tools that will do the job 98% of the time, most likely. If you're trying to record rain and a thunderclap in the same clip, well, then 32 bits is the tool you need. If you're a field recordist who specializes in ambient sounds that are really quiet, well, 32-bit is undoubtedly helpful, though recordists have been doing just fine without it. And if you often record where you can't check your meters like in a public place where you don't want to draw attention to yourself, that's another great reason to buy a 32-bit float recorder. Now, 32-bit float recorders are most certainly the future, and in a few years, it's likely that most recorders will offer this feature. And, you know, that's great. There's no harm, other than, you know, maybe file size. But it also means that the price will drop significantly. It already has since high-end gear started featuring 32-bit float. No offense to Zoom, but you may want to wait and think twice before running out and spending the money now.